Hello everyone. One of the main tools in the workshop of an amateur radio operator or an electronics engineer is a multimeter. Without him, it's like without hands. Checking radio components, assembling a device, repairing equipment, all this requires a multimeter. For a long time I have been using such an ordinary multimeter. Now it has become obvious that it is time to replace it, since some of the functions I need are missing here, and measurement errors have also appeared. As a replacement, I chose this modern digital multimeter GVDA, model GD120B. I want to say right away that this is a great device. In this video, those who are just starting to get acquainted with electronics will be able to see how to use a multimeter and how to take measurements. And those who are already experienced electronics engineers will be able to learn about all the possibilities of this multimeter, which, by the way, are many. The multimeter is sold in such a box. By the way, if you have a desire to purchase such a multimeter, then follow the link that will be in the description under this video. During transportation, the box was slightly damaged, but I hope that it did not affect the performance of the device. Inside the box is a pleasant surprise. This is a case for the device. The material of this case is made of fabric, but at the same time it is quite tough, durable and very convenient for storing a multimeter and probes. And here is the device itself. Instructions in English. Here is a description of all the functions and instructions for working with the multimeter. And here is a frame with the characteristics of a multimeter. It's worth looking at more closely. Measurement of a constant voltage up to 600 volts and an error of 0.5%. Then the alternating voltage. Also up to 600 volts and an error of 0.8%. Resistance up to 60 megaohms. The current strength is up to 10 amperes. Capacity, that is, capacitors, up to 60 millifreds, that is, 60,000 microfreds. Frequency up to 10 megahertz. Then the mode of checking diodes and, accordingly, transistors, as well as checking the electrical circuit. Another mode is temperature measurement from minus 40 to 1000 degrees. Well, quite acceptable characteristics. Included with this multimeter are these probes. The maximum measurement limit is indicated on the probes, it is 600 volts and 10 amperes. The wire on the probes is soft enough and it will definitely last for some time. Also included with the multimeter is a temperature sensor, that is, a thermocouple. And here's the multimeter. The device has an attractive appearance and looks like a smartphone. There are no connectors and no buttons on the side and top panels. There's a flashlight in the back, and in the lower part there are three connectors for connecting probes. Multimeter in a rubber case. Its sides protrude slightly above the screen, which can protect it when falling. The multimeter comes without batteries, so now I will install them, and let's look at its performance.
There is a compartment for four batteries. When the multimeter is turned on, the auto mode is selected by default. Also here on the screen we see a temperature of 25 degrees. You can select the desired measurement mode using the central button. This is a voltage measurement. Resistance measurement. Checking the electrical circuit. Checking diodes and transistors. Capacity, that is, checking the capacitors. Frequency. Temperature, current strength, and the NCV mode, that is, the search for an electric field. Also in this mode, using the cell button, you can select another function, live. That is, the device can be used as an indicator screwdriver to find the phase. Then the auto mode is turned on again. If you hold down and hold the cell button, the flashlight turns on. The flashlight turns off in the same way. By pressing the cell button for a long time. The hold button is needed to fix the value on the screen. The control of this device is very simple, intuitive and does not cause any difficulties. Now I will connect the probes to this multimeter. The black probe must be connected to the comm socket. And the red probe must be connected to the right socket. Almost all modes are measured here. And only when measuring the current strength you will need to connect the red probe to the left socket. Well, now let's check it in the work. Let's move on to measurements. The first mode is voltage measurement. First I measure the constant voltage, 3.7 volt battery, it is quite possible that it is a little discharged. 3.57 volts. When the polarity is changed, the multimeter shows minus, minus 3.57 volts. A finger battery of one and a half volts. It is also discharged, and the device shows 1173 volts. A charger with an output of 12 volts and a current of up to 2 amperes. Twelve point three eight volts. Now let's see how this device measures alternating voltage. To do this, switch the device using the cell button to measure AC voltage. Two hundred thirty three volts and a frequency of forty nine to fifty hertz. Now we can move on. And the next mode is resistance measurement. Resistance at 470 kiloms. Four hundred seventy seven. One hundred fifty ohms. Also everything is clear. 10 ohms. And another resistance of 1 megam. Everything is fine too. The next mode is an electrical circuit check and a beep.
There are no problems here either. The beep is working. We can move on. The next mode is to check the diodes. 604 Does not pass in this direction. Transistors are also checked in this mode. In this case, it is a KT817 transistor. In order to check the transistor, you need to install one probe on the base. In this transistor, the base is this output. And with the second probe we touch the rest of the conclusions. The multimeter shows nothing. Now we change the probes, positive probe to the base. 609 610 Everything is fine, and now you need to ring the collector emitter junction. There's nothing. We change the probes. There is also nothing. Great, the transistor is intact and it can be used. The next mode is to check the capacitors. 100 microfarad capacitor. Before checking, the capacitor must be discharged. To do this, you need to close its conclusions for a short time. And now we connect the minus probe to the minus, and the plus one to the plus. After some thought, the device shows 104 microfarads. Let's try again. Discharge. One hundred four microfarads. Another capacitor of a smaller capacity for forty seven microfarads. Forty nine microfarads. Another forty seven nanofrad capacitor. Let's see how the multimeter will react to it. 48 nanofrad. Well, great. As you can see, with a small delay, but, nevertheless, the multimeter determines the capacitance of the capacitor quite clearly. The next mode is frequency measurement. And, as an example, I measure the frequency in the outlet. The frequency is exactly 50 Hz. The next mode is temperature measurement. To measure the temperature, I will turn off these probes. I'll connect a thermocouple instead. Now I'm measuring the temperature of the soldering iron. The soldering iron has a temperature of 350 degrees. Let's see what the device shows. We see an instantaneous change in values. The device shows almost 360 degrees. The next mode to measure is the current strength. The multimeter suggests that the probe is incorrectly connected. If you switch the selection of this mode again, then this connector is highlighted in green and indicates that the red probe needs to be moved here. It's all right now. To measure the current strength, the multimeter must be connected to a circuit break. 
It looks like this. At the terminals of 12 volts. I will connect the minus wire to the LED strip, and the plus wire to the plus probe of the multimeter. Now I will connect the minus probe to the LED strip. The multimeter shows a current strength of 228 milliamps. And another measurement mode is the NCV mode. That is, the search for an electric field. Let's see what the device shows. This is a network wire. This mode works perfectly. And the last function of this multimeter is the live mode. That is phase search. This is zero. And this is the phase. And, of course, let's check the auto mode. In automatic mode, this multimeter measures three values, which is indicated by this switch. These are voltage, resistance and electrical circuit. Now let's check all these functions. Alternating voltage. 224 volts. Constant voltage. 3.57 volts. The resistance is 180 kilo ohms. We will also test the hold mode, that is, memorizing the last value. The voltage of this battery is 3.57 volts. Let's say we need to remember this value. Press the hold button and now this value is saved on the screen. When the hold button is pressed again, the value is deleted. As this test showed, the GVDA multimeter perfectly fulfills all the stated functions. Measurements are made fairly accurately, clearly and without significant delays. Well, as you can see, the GVDA digital multimeter is an excellent choice for a home workshop. In the description under this video there will be a link, by clicking on which you can, if you wish, purchase this multimeter for yourself. This concludes this video. In order not to miss the next video, click on the subscribe button and also on the bell icon next to this button. I thank you for watching and bye.